Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to commence the last session of this forum, session four. And I hope you enjoy the coffee break. Uh, the previous session was on time, and let's keep it that way for the upcoming session. This session four, entitled Building the Body of Knowledge for Impactful Volunteering, focus on how international volunteering organizations try to generate new knowledge to find ways to improve volunteering system. The session consists of the three presentations by Ms. Amanda Mukwashi, Chief of Volunteer Knowledge and Innovation Section of UNB, Dr. Yasnobu Okabe, Professor at JICA Research Institute, and Mr. Jongmin Park, Director of Planning, uh, Director of World Friends Planning and Coordination Team, which will be followed by three minutes discussion and Q&A. Now I'd like to turn to uh, Ms. Amanda Mukwashi for her presentation on positioning volunteerism. Please give her a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Um, are you awake? <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm glad that you're still with us. Uh, I know it's been a very long day, but uh, this is the last session. I'm hoping that we're going to have a bit of time to interact together. Uh, so um, I want to uh, beg for your indulgence right at the beginning and uh, allow us uh, a little bit, uh, maybe five extra minutes towards the end so that at least we can hear more your voices than ours. So uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much to Koika and Jaika for this privilege. I'm always very humbled when I come uh, to this part of the world because it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a part of the world that I don't know very well, but it's also a part of the world where I really respect the values of, uh, of, of the society here that is uh, in, uh, in, in a very strange way, very similar to some of our own values back in my home country. So thank you very much. Um, I want to start by saying, uh, I want to frame this, uh, this session this afternoon. I want to give you a bit of uh, a, a sense of what are some of the issues. Why are we talking about this at this time? Why is this important for us to start talking about it? Right? In the audience, we've got uh, people coming from government. We've got people coming from civil society organizations, NGOs. We've got people coming from academia. We also have people coming from the private sector. Development, the SDGs, are not going to be achieved without every single one of you in the room. That is the reality. That is the biggest lesson coming out of the MDGs, that a global partnership is absolutely essential and necessary to turn uh, the tide of, uh, of inequality, of injustice, and of poverty. Yeah. So, um, why do we need to position volunteering in this global framework? Um, if I had a lot of time, I would have encouraged all of you to go and visit the, Glo the Koika Global vi Village because it explains the necessity of this session in very graphic ways of showing um, the, the lifestyles that we have and why we need to improve the evidence and the knowledge that we need. So, um, what do we know? We know that, um, we know that uh, the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, or Agenda 2030, cannot be achieved without people, right? Yeah? Good. I, I like to see your nods because, uh, you know, for those of you who have been to some parts of Africa, we talk with our, with our bodies. So when people go like this, it means they're with you, right? Okay. So um, we know that the Sustainable Development Goals cannot be achieved without people. What else do we know? We know that volunteering is a gateway for more people to participate, for more people to engage in terms of civic engagement, for more people to own the agenda so that they can say in their own local communities that yes, I am part of this. What else do we know? We know that volunteers are the first responders. When there's an earthquake, before your international people can come, who is at the scene? It's members of the community volunteering their services to help each other. What else do we know? We know that over 50 years of doing international volunteering, that it complements local and national efforts in the fight against uh, 
poverty and inequalities. These are the things that we know. However, what do we need to do? There is much that we don't know. So we can tell really good stories about the role, the impact, and the contribution of volunteers in humanitarian situations, in disasters, in development, in education, in health. There are so many examples, and we heard these, some of these today, right? But these are stories, and they're stories that are meaningful. But for us to talk to policymakers, for us to convince the private sector, for us to really get people to see that there is an impact, we have gaps. We need to deepen our knowledge and our understanding of really why is it that volunteering can make a difference and how does it make a difference? Because we know that in every society in the world, the UN did a report that in every society in the world, volunteering exists in one form or another. Yeah? It exists. It might be called something different in your country or in your community, but it's there. The spirit and the value of giving and being part and being recognized exists in all our communities. So why is it that at this point in time, we need to shift that? Yeah. In UNV, uh, last year in November 2015, the General Assembly of the United Nations adopted what is called a plan of action. Um, you know, we all know that in September, they adopted the Sustainable Development Goals. In November, they adopted what is called a plan of action. The plan of action is a roadmap. How many of you are coming from governments? A number of you. The plan of action is a, is a, is, it was consulted among NGOs, among civil society, among the private sector, and among a lot of governments. It was co-sponsored by over 100 member states. And if uh, we can share this plan of action with you, it actually talks in detail about the key issues that we volunteers can do as a means of implementation and as a contribution to the SDGs. It actually focuses on each one of the SDGs and also talks about what do we now need to do. And in particular, it talks about three things. It talks about the fact that volunteers can strengthen people's ownership of the development agenda. Because when you enhance civic engagement and you enable um, citizens to engage, whether it's young people, whether it's women, whether it's the elderly, or you know, that way people can own their agenda. It talks about uh, integrating volunteering in national and global post-2015 agenda implementation strategies. So at country level, when you're planning, when the municipalities are planning, when the districts are planning, when the central government is planning, really thinking about not just the money, but also how can we make sure that people are involved? And in particular, how can we use volunteering as a way to involve people? The third one, which is what I want to highlight on because this is what the session is about, is on measurement of volunteering. The member states, when they adopted the plan of action, they highlighted the third important thing, that you know, we need to look at measuring volunteer contribution in a holistic way to ensure the understanding of the engagement of people and their well-being. Volunteering is not a one-way street. It's not just about giving. It's about giving and it's about taking. Yesterday, we went to the Koika village, um, global village, and I took a picture which I want to share with my, my team when I get back. And it's a picture about the history and the footprints of Koika. And there was one picture uh, that showed bags of rice. And these bags of rice came from Liberia as a gift to Korea in the 1950s when Korea had been devastated by war. What I got from there was, I was really humbled because what I got from there is an acknowledgement from Korea that there are times when you're down and there are times when you're up. And you know, there are times when you take and there are times when you give. And that is what volunteering is. It is an expression of human beings that it's a, it's a game of give and take, right? And we hold each other's hands in order for us to get to the next stage. So. Um, the focus of this discussion, of this uh, conversation you're going to hear this afternoon, is really on, on that knowledge. 
It's really on that knowledge. And what we're going to do is you're going to hear different elements of, of, of the subject of knowledge. And I hope that uh, we'll be able to engage. You'll hear it from impact measurement, evaluations, research. So there's a big spectrum in terms of how can we actually be, build empirical data and knowledge on what role the volunteers um, have. Just quickly, uh, I want to say for UNV in particular, we know that we cannot implement the plan of action uh, all by ourselves. We are just the secretariat uh, that has been mandated by member states to be able to facilitate and engage volunteer involving organizations. Um, however, we have a role in a global research agenda. You know, there have been discussions. There was a discussion, I think, uh, BVF, um, I can't remember, there was, uh, I, there was somebody from BVF earlier on, from the Beijing volunteer, yeah? Ah, uh, we've been talking with some of, uh, some of your team because, for example, the BRICS countries came together l late last year and looked at the global research agenda. And these were the presidents of the universities from the BRICS countries. And they were asking themselves, how can we invest? How can we do more in terms of building this knowledge? How can we do more in terms of looking at impact? Yeah? So uh, this global uh, research agenda, even as I speak today, um, I'm here. Uh, because um, my colleagues from Quaker asked me to come, but I was supposed to be in Stockholm for a global research agenda meeting on volunteering. And, and this has become really quite important. Um, so in terms of leaving no one behind, I think that uh, one of the key things is um, uh, research is critical. Gathering the knowledge is critical, but it cannot stand alone. Yeah. If research is going to make any concrete differences, it must be motivated by policy and practice needs. The starting point must be the SDGs themselves. There must be health, it must be education, it must be environment, it must be the fact that in the Pacific, they're having a big issue with climate change. And then when you come from there, then you look at what are the gaps? What can volunteers do to help alleviate that? Because it's not just about being a volunteer, it's about being a volunteer to transform society and communities, right? Lastly, I want to say that for UNV, apart from being the secretariat of the um, plan of action, in terms of knowledge, we're investing in three critical areas. One, I don't know if any of you have seen the State of the World's Volunteering Report. It comes out once every three years. We had one that came out last year, the next one is due to come out in 2018, and it's going to be on resilience. And this is a document for all of us who work with volunteers to be able to do research, longitudinal research, that shows without doubt that volunteers make an impact and contribute to the sustainable development agenda. And now we focus on each theme so that we can take examples from all around the world. And I can tell you a little bit more later. The second area is what we call collaborative partnerships in terms of joint publications of research. You know, we want to partner, including with the private sector. We want to discuss with Harvard. We want to have a discussion with Joseph Hopkins. We want to discuss with Northumbria University. We want to discuss with the University of Moscow. We want to discuss with the University of Kenya. But all this is we want collaborative partnerships in order for our students to be researching on volunteering as a matter of course not as a, something that is an exception, but as part of something that they're interested in, that can be funded, that can be resourced. Um, the last two areas are measurement and reporting. Now, this is a big topic, and I hope that when we start discussing, maybe I can come back to that. Because uh, UNV is taking on, um, the SDGs will have to be reported. Agreed? Agreed? Yes, the SDGs will have to be reported. The first reports are coming this month in July at the High Level Political Forum in New York. Only 22 countries have volunteered to, start to be the, the pilots in terms of volunteering. If we cannot interact with our governments to make sure that volunteering has been measured and is in the government reports when they go to report, then we have missed a boat, we have missed an opportunity. So we have to strategize we have to look at how are we actually going to measure both at the organizational level but as well as at a global level so that we are able to talk about volunteering in a very positive and impactful way. 
And then, of course, for UNV to also have legitimacy, we measure and we have our own monitoring systems, which uh, we are talking about some other day, not the subject for today, uh, in terms of how we capture the scope, the scale, and the nature and impact of volunteering. I'll stop there. I want to leave you with a, a long um, quote from Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. He says, as we seek to build capacities and to help the new agenda to take root, volunteerism can be another powerful and cross-cutting means of implementation. Volunteerism can help to expand and mobilize constituencies. And it can engage people in national planning, in implementation for sustainable development goals. And volunteer groups can help to localize the new agenda by providing new spaces of interaction between governments and people for concrete and scalable actions. Sorry for taking long, but let's have a conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you for the wonderful presentation, Amanda. And uh, I'm looking forward to more conversations from her and from our other panelists. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Mr. Uh, Mr. Yasunobu Okabe for his presentation. Please give, give him a big hand. He's right there. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairman and Ms. Amanda. Uh, my name is, oh, yeah. My name is Yasunobu Okabe uh, from Tohoku University. Uh, and uh, I am also a visiting research fellow of, for, of a JICA Research Institute. Uh, yes. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm afraid that, um, well, my presentation has no photos, no movies, <laughs> and I have no joke. <laughs> so I am uh, quite worried that uh, you may not. <laughs> not for answering me, my question, but for <laughs> sleepiness. Well, anyway, my presentation will address two issues. First is a variation of international volunteers' impact. And uh, second is exploring what assistance VIOs can provide to volunteers for more impactful uh, service. Uh, I will review studies on JOCVs conducted by my colleagues at the JICA Research Institute. I will argue that uh, my argument is two fours, two fours. It is important to explore what kind of uh, change volunteers can bring and to what extent. The second is an effective assistance is connecting volunteers to each other and to volunteer coordinators and also to VIO's local offices. First, evaluation of volunteers' impact. We need lenses to see change that volunteers can provide to local people and the communities. Volunteering is not a simple independent variable, but volunteering work in a causal chain and interactive causality. So I have two lenses here. First is capacity development. OECD DAC defined this as endogenous process by which people, organizations, and society as a whole enhance capacity to manage their, their affairs successfully. Volunteers can serve as a catalyst for uh, capacity development. A study of Akio Hosono, uh, the uh, former director of JICA Research Institute, uh, he discusses that GOCVs can contribute to uh, capacity development through networking with other organizations and sharing points of view with local people. Uh, his he, he conducted case studies, mathematics education, indigo dyeing training, and the conservation of cultural heritage in Central America. Another lens I have prepared is social capital, which promotes cooperative activities in local communities and the local people. Its main components is trust, social networks, and a norm of reciprocity. You may, some of you may, may have heard of that. Oh, sorry. 
So uh, uh, international volunteers can help social capital increase through networking and trust building. Sorry, for limiting time, I skip this presentation, and I will show my ongoing study with my colleague. So um, in this study, uh, there is a, uh, how can I say, a pre-understanding about the essence of volunteering. Essence of volunteering is networking in local communities. It's our understanding. So networking promotes trust building. And trust building also enhances or promotes networking. So intercourses between them uh, help restrain deception among people or in local communities, thereby leading to uh, cooperative activities, mutual learning, and ownership. But to what extent international volunteers can increase social capital? We, we try to measure social capital by, uh, brought by uh, Japanese volunteers. We use survey data collected by JICA Research Institute. We have two indexes, network and trust. To measure these indexes, we have prepared some proxies, such as a number of cross friends that uh, uh, volunteers developed in host countries, times they participated in family ceremonies, or trust toward people or colleagues on a scale of one to four. So these numbers are the uh, points of social network index and the trust index. We conclude that surely international volunteers can contribute to social capital formation. And we have discovered that uh, more social capital formation is made in Asia than in other regions. It's, it's also interesting. Oh, sorry. So second issue is exploring effectiveness, effective assistance for impactful volunteering. As I said, as I demonstrated, uh, international volunteers like JOCVs can increase social capital, promote capacity development, but if VIOs provide good assistance or adequate assistance to them, volunteers may perform much better because volunteers every day face problems, various problems. You may, you may know that, such as misunderstanding, cultural gap, gender inequality, uh, non-cooperation, lack of materials and inform information, etc., etc. So, as a result, volunteers may fail to keep on making efforts, being discouraged, and finally, they may fail to achieve desired results. This point, if I'm not wrong, has not been touched upon in this forum yet. Putting these problems that the volunteers face in a black box, we may have assumed that volunteers, people able, able people with capacity. So we discussed what they can do. But before discussing that, we need to think about their willingness, their motivations, their capacity, their uh, the, uh, uh, efforts. So let's open a black box. What kind of people volunteers are? VIOs can provide assistance for that. But the important question is, which assistance should be provided? Oh. So to think about that, th that problem issue, I I'd like to propose you to consider the relationship between VIOs and volunteers. What kind of relations it should be or it is? My understanding, it's not principal agent pro, uh, relationship. There is no explicit contract, no performance standards, no command, no control, no sanction like bureaucracies. 
Is this correct? It's something like, in my understanding, fiduciary relationship in which VIOs entrust specific services to volunteers. And the volunteers are expected to perform well, but act independently from VIOs. So VIOs can provide assistance, but uh, VIOs should respect this relationship of fiduciary to provide assistance. Because essence of volunteers, volunteers is, again, networking. My colleagues study uh, support my argument. For example, this study, this study titled Making Efforts to Work, Not Being Discouraged by Obstacles. They focus on the psychologist terminology, self-efficacy, which is the, uh, your belief in your own ability to complete your task. It's like feeling you can do it, I can do it. If you can do, if I feel I can do it, I have self-efficacy. So uh, Sato and Uyama conducted the interview-based and survey database analysis and concluded like this. What encourage volunteers to keep on making efforts to keep self-efficacy is professional and practical advice of JICA local offices, networks between volunteers, and their personality. So I, I skip this because this uh, study also support my argument. So now we have let, come to the conclusion. I talked about every evaluation of volunteers' impact. I showed the importance to explore what kind of change volunteers can bring to local people and local communities. I showed the two lenses to see the change, capacity development and the social capital. In this process of CD and SC, volunteers can play a role as catalyst networkers, and also they can share points of view with local people. And the second thing I talked about is VIO's um, assistance for more volunteering impact. But we have to remember VIOs and volunteers has a relationship of fiduciary. So in which there's no control, no command. Don't do that, but do connecting volunteers to each other to volunteer coordinators and to VIO's local offices because networking is essence of volunteering. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Yasunobu Okabe, for your presentation. His approach was really unique in that he tried to analyze the achievements of volunteerism in terms of uh, capacity build, capacity development, and social capital. So now let us welcome Jongmin Park, director of World Friends Planning and Coordination Team, which was primarily responsible for hosting today's event. Please give him a big round of applause. Thank you very much. My name is Jongmin Park. The, Koika, the World, World Friends Volunteer Coordination and plan, Planning Team. Um, it was a wonderful the presentation. Thank you, uh, Amanda and Okabe. So before uh, starting my presentation, so I want to share um, my impression on preparation for uh, session four. We contact, we discussed um, with Amanda and Okabe by email on the phone, over the phone. So we uh, agreed just uh, on um, just the issue, the agenda of the session. But um, after the checking the content, the prepared by the Amanda, and I just um, uh, provided by just some um, Okabe, uh, Mr. Okabe, and the mine as well. So we are the big different. That means we are seeing a similar view. We are not big different from among uh, all of the participants. Uh, based on my just um, what I mentioned, I will start my presentation. I prepare the some impact, the um, 
uh, knowledge building and impact. So that's why I, I emphasize, my, my presentation is very simple. I emphasize on impact. Why? Impact can, could be contributed to carrying out SDGs, an impact of volunteerism. And knowledge building is a way to uh, develop the, some, the induced impact, to make the impact. So uh, please understand the people at my presentation. So here I go, I'll start. Um, so I uh, prepare some highlight of my presentation to make you understand easier. The I uh, just um, take three points. One is volunteers' role and responsibility. Second is volunteer involving organization, political and strategic changes, especially especially for supporting and making circumstances to volunteerism. The third is the main point, the so institutional. And as a systematical just a issue, that is uh, the raising effectiveness. That is related to impact. The, uh, we are seeing, we are having the, the tool, the, which is RBM, Result Based Management. I cannot explain the detail about that, but I just I want to show a basic model. And I just, uh, uh, my purpose is to raise your awareness on the why we do the measure the volunteering, volunteering activities. And from the measurement, what can we do? Some, what can you just uh, contribute to the carrying out the SDGs, achievement of SDGs? Um, to, it is the more detailed so table of contents. Uh, basically, based on international discourse on volunteerism, I wanna just, I would like to raise your questions, raise your agenda. And the answer the agenda. Uh, uh, which are logical, theoretical framework and volunteer connectivity. Uh, through so my presentation, one, two, three, four, I want to suggest, I want to mention about the implementation. There's a uh, number six is just a reference. Then I will start with international discourse on volunteerism. You know, just uh, you, heard, you have heard the, from many presentations and uh, many reference books and newspaper broadcasting. Volunteering, is, uh, volunteering, volunteering and volunteerism is an essential part of the means to carry out the SDGs. Everybody knows. And volunteerism and planning, placing people at the center of uh, development policy, people to people, through the change of people, and invest offer untapped potential. That means volunteer has unlimited potential and for infinite possibilities. And pass, impossible to achieve the goal number 16, peace and justice, and number 17, partnership without the volunteerism. Now one more page I prepared. The um, volunteerism, you know, just a uh, volunteering spirit, you can see many just some um, disaster, diversity areas like just um, AIDS, HIV, Zika, Ebola, you know, just a quick uh, the step also dispatched last year to African countries to cope with the Ebola site. There's some outbreak in, uh, outbreak in Ebola site. And also we dispatched Korean uh, Quika people in uh, Afghanistan and the Iraq. The, there's some inside them. I emphasize that volunteering spirit is in indispensable factor for the people to participate in the, in, the, in the activities for the safety, peacekeeping, re, uh, reconstruction, coping with emergency relief, just uh, like what I explained. But that is the point. In reality, low end contribution of volunteer, volunteers is compar comparatively undervalued in the areas of global development contribution. I remind those, volunteer is very important and uh, key ways so essential, important way to contribute to, to SDGs, but comparatively, uh, objectively, on the value is it true. This I, I just point out that. Uh, so I raise your questions: How can volunteerism in reality objectively, more effectively, contribute to global development issues? Second question is: What is relevant relationship between 
volunteering and develop to achieve SDGs? Uh, my answer is logical and theological framework. We, we have the many volunteers and they are active, they do, they conduct the activities in, on, on the field. And we do monitoring and evaluation. So JICA do, and then COICA do, and UMB do. Every the, some volunteer sending, volunteer involving uh, organization to conduct uh, monitoring and evaluation. But the point is that the object proof. So the volunteering is not just some well short, the rack. So, uh, to real the contribute to two SDGs, I wanna mention this measurement system, the two value of the 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 effectiveness volunteerism. We uh, think of the measurement, how to measure volunteers objectively. So not measure in the but the, my another point is that I I would like to measure the individual volunteers, but so outcome volunteer produce, there's a system and the result. That's why the power of volunteer, or potential of volunteers are from their free will, free action, free decisions. And so when you measure individual persons that we can some expect on, um, well, not good impact, not good result. So, uh, this is the own progress, but point is that just to measure the system uh, from the activities. Uh, in this page, I, I need to uh, explain about the RBM. RBM is the, uh, from the paper, the increasingly promoted as a way align strategic pro priority result and ask to the document that intended development changes from intervention, they Employment and support. Koika also the uh, mention about the uh, RPM is a management strategy focusing on performance and achievement of product outcome and in impact. So this is uh, um, our the logical model, theoretical model for the Koika World Friend Volunteer. We have three goals, overall goals, and. Uh, just uh, logically, from the activities, we have outcome and indicators. Indicators and uh, under the goal, three goals. And just, uh, well, uh, we uh, conduct satisfaction in satisfaction survey, and uh, we, we hold a meeting, the evaluation meeting, but it has, it has a limited the result to, to um, show the objectively the result to show the, the objectively contribution to the achievement SDGs. So we are the continuously, continuously to research uh, in this project, in this in this uh, uh, framework. One more thing, um, I emphasize on the framework, logical framework. And another thing is the volunteerism's the uh, law of the lubricant law. Um, every activities of the development project, I'm sure it has a volunteer spirit inside. In that sense, the volunteer and the development project and capacity building and other expert and private partnership, some volunteer, volunteer, volunteerism is the uh, linkages and connectivities. And that will be a, there are some contribution one on, on more the uh, role of contribution responsibilities to um, achieve the SDGs. This is my point. Uh, one more, the another in another it is it is another sense of the connectivity. Uh, we have the three kind of volunteers: the international volunteers, and national volunteers, and local volunteers. Of course, the Koika dispatch only overseas volunteer to develop developing partner countries, but it has, partner culture has its own national volunteers. And community has also local volunteers. It has the, the synergy to uh, cause more impact and the raising impact, through the raising impact, to the, some increase the 
contribution to SDGs, those interactions, and connect, we need to the, consider the raising the connectivity among local, national, and international volunteerism. From my the, uh, education, the background and education, and the measurement and connectivity, I want to just um, show implementations of my presentation. First one, I want, I want, I would like to raise awareness so from the, all the participants. So evidence-based management is important. The second is the among volunteer involving organizations and also among all the volunteers, the share minimum said that not, I want to, the, every the volunteer sending, volunteer involving organization to have the same the guideline and the rules and standards. Just we, we need to share the minimum standard and direction of the imp for the impact, the LBM. And building knowledge and partnership of IBOs, um, very, very important. That's why that is a make it perfect the, of the LBM and system and measurement. One more thing, enhance voice and participants' accountability and responsiveness of a range of actors at all the older level. Lastly, strength, strength and recognition of the role and potential of volunteerism. This is my presentation. Once again, I emphasize what just on, the, on my presentation is impact, raising impact. The strength impact is a way to contribute to SDGs. To raising impact, the, we need a system, a minimum, minim, at least minimum standard we have to share. And from, from that, we can objectively, the tangibly can show some contributed to SDGs. So this is my point. And I just so we have partnership with UMB and other all the international inter, uh, volunteer sending, volunteer involving organization. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation, Mr. Park. And without further ado, I'd like to bring the pan uh, panelists for the discussion. Uh, so I'd like to welcome our panelists and moderator, uh, Ms. Amanda Mukwashi, uh, Jongmin Park, and Dr. Yasunobu Kabe and Song Su Ju to the floor for the panel discussion. Panel discussion will last about 30 minutes and this, uh, my, Ms. Uh, Ms. Amanda Mukashi will be the moderator of this panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Okay, I've been told that due to the bus schedule, we have to finish on time. So, <laughs> um, we have one more uh, short uh, presentation. Um, so I would like to invite uh, Dr. Chung, to go ahead with it. Okay. Yeah? And then we'll have the discussion. I have seven minutes. You have five minutes now. Five minutes. Thank you. <laughs> I'm back on the stage. <laughs> okay. And this time, I want to show you first volunteering impact equation. You are familiar with equation, right? In mathematics. So I, I want to show this one uh, by uh, applying the uh, Dr. Okabe's uh, presentation of CDNSC uh, with perspective of theory of change, IOOI model. If we invest input, then we can expect outputs, outcomes, and cumulative impacts. It's a change, uh, it's a theory of change. Uh, impacts, uh, we have volunteers, international and also national. By national, I mean a host country, citizen volunteers. And fund, we need some money. And volunteering, infrastructures, 
one of the training centers programs. Outputs as volunteer activities in education, healthcare, etc. Then we see CD and SC, CD capital development among volunteers and organizations. And international volunteers can transfer skills to host country individuals and VIOs. Social capital, uh, international volunteers can increase trust and understanding among people in Bara. Then finally, we can expect impacts as community development, poverty reduction, uh, such result is the uh, cumulative uh, result outcomes of CD and SCs. I think Dr. Okabe can agree with this equation, right? Thank you. <laughs> so, in uh, VI, I want to emphasize the importance of national volunteering. It's very important in UMB documents. Uh, Amanda Mukashi uh, showed us about the uh, UMB's annual report 2015. I have read this document. And I brought some examples of special volunteering fund for national volunteering. Two cases in Gabon and uh, Vietnam. Actually, in uh, developing countries, uh, we can see uh, many uh, volunteering giving, helping tradition and cultures according to Gallup International Survey, Global Survey. You can see the uh, 2015 survey uh, result. Uh, that result shows that many volunteers in developing countries, including Myanmar, Vietnam, and many other countries too. In UMB's special volunteering fund, uh, first in Gabon, uh, there was a feasibility study and project drafting for the National Volunteer Scheme and U.S. 5 million cost sharing agreement with the Gabon government and a joint UMB UNDP program for volunteering infrastructure initiative in Gabon. In Vietnam, alongside capacity building activities for volunteer leaders and national volunteer awards, UMB provided as VP funding and collaborated with the youth union to develop an online matching platform to facilitate volunteering. I think national volunteering is a very important strategy for SDGs. Uh, Amanda Mukashi's mention of the UMB plan of action uh, to integrate uh, volunteering into development policies towards 16 to 30. So I want to skip this part. So it's very important to, to remind us the uh, plan of actions strategy first strengths people's ownership. It's very important keyword. Ownership of the development agenda. I want to suggest kind of establishment of volunteer centers for national volunteering. Volunteer centers can play roles of platforms for national volunteering. At volunteer centers, national and international volunteers share skills and know-hows. One country, one host country can have many volunteer centers. For example, in Vietnam, uh, they, they can have Hanoi Volunteer Centers, uh, Ho Chi Minh City Volunteer Centers, uh, Vien City Volunteer Centers, like that. And we need a special fund for the Volunteer Center establishment and organizational sustainability. There are lots of uh, important functions, Volunteer uh, Centers functions for capital development, uh, capacity development, and social capital. First one is bureaucracy. 
Second, strategic development of volunteering. Good practice development. Developing volunteer lean opportunities, etc. Last year in Korea, we have an experience uh, in having a short-term exchange program with veteran volunteer centers, a Korea Volunteering Association, and Ministry of Public Administration have this kind of program. Now, I would like to suggest why COICA can help initiative for national volunteering because it's very important for uh, we can uh, have some very big kind of a big push in uh, volunteering impacts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think that what I'm going to try and do is immediately go to the floor. Um, but I just want to flag up one thing. I hope you have noticed the diversity of the type of presentations that we've had. Um, I think earlier on somebody said, um, uh, I think it was Mr. Chung from uh, Megabox, that you know the, the difference between uh, development organizations and the private sector can be quite wide. The difference in how we approach um, building knowledge between academia and um, uh, volunteer involving organizations can also be quite wide. But somehow we find the synergies and we have to find a way of making it work. So um, shall I invite uh, questions at this point uh, and open the floor? And I'm hoping you've got uh, hundreds of questions so that um, we can have an exciting conversation. Okay. I've seen one, but let me just see. Um, so there's, what, can we have a microphone here, Richard? And then there's a hand up there. Can you put your hand up there? And then a third one? Okay, so let's take the two and then uh, we can respond. Thank you. Uh, thank you for fantastic presentations, um, all three. I, I have two questions and one comment. For Mr. Okabe, um, Mr. Okabe-san, if we are going to pursue results-based management, which means that we are going to have not just desired results, but intended results, will that not fundamentally change the way in which we have to manage volunteers? Because then we no longer can work in the kind of loose arrangement that you are talking about, but we actually have to make sure that there's a lot more rigor in the way that they work. That's question number one. Question for, for, for Mr. Park. Um, if the, the, the model that you are looking for is all about development impact, but I would tend to say that in a context of global goals, the creation of global citizens and measuring how global citizens are being created and what global citizens do after they volunteer may be equally important. How would you react to that? And for Professor uh, Sung Soju, it's more a, a comment. The conclusion that you have reached on national volunteer centers, I believe a number of agencies are getting there at the same time. COICA, the Peace Corps, uh, France Volontaire, uh, we've been tinkering around with it already quite some time, but it's very interesting, different names for the same concept. France Volontaires talk about l'espace volontaire, the space for volunteers. Um, volunteer centers, volunteer offices, but the basic concept of building that national infrastructure so that national volunteers start working in a more structured manner with international volunteers. So how do you see that relationship then between national and international volunteers evolving with a stronger volunteer infrastructure at the national level? Thank you. Um, I'll take one more question, please, before we answer. My name is Kyutar. Uh, I am from um, private development organization in Korea. Uh, I thank uh, Koika and UMB I was a Koika volunteer uh, in 2000 uh, to 2002. And then uh, after that, I was a UMB volunteer uh, in China until 2006. 
um, it was yeah, uh, my entry point for development uh, work. And um, the, I really uh, learned a lot uh, from that volunteer uh, experience. Um, and um, mm, the, like um, today's uh, subject, uh, we have um, common development goals, uh, SDG. So 16 goals and um, uh, 169 uh, target to achieve. Um, it's really a, a, a lot of um, a work uh, to do, and it's really a long way to go. So um, I, I think um, we need a um, collective, uh, make a um, collective impact on SDG to volunteer uh, program. So um, I, I want to know uh, UMV's uh, some the uh, initiative and um, the strategy for some global uh, collective impact um, on the SDG. In the, I, I compare uh, volunteers to star um, in space. Um, the imagine the, uh, the stars uh, in space. But uh, we have to um, draw some constellation. Uh, the, then we can um, show some the, uh, uh, impact and um, some result uh, through our the, uh, uh, constellation work. So um, I think um, global um, collective uh, impact and global collective uh, initiative uh, will be uh, very important to achieve RSDG uh, until 2030. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I just check any other person wants to ask a question? Because I think we're only going to take one round. There's a hand over there, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jane Kim. Uh, I'm working here in Koika as an intern. And uh, while listening to uh, this speech today, I've thought of a couple of questions to you. And the first one is, uh, RBM, right? Result-based ma management. And uh, what was the main reason that you chose uh, the RBM as one of the most important measurements to um, measure up the in in national volunteer? And the second one is um, about social, uh, social capital. Actually, I guess uh, there is a different kinds of network like business network, social network, and friendly network that uh, we built among our friends. But do you think that uh, just a normal uh, activities that we do in volunteering uh, could be able to uh, last for a long time enough to uh, increase social capital in our society that we are, that where we live? Thank you. Thank you very much. Any last burning questions from anybody? Yes, one more. Thank you. Hello. Oh, thanks for a nice pre presentation. My name is Yi Tong Hyun. I'm also one of the Koika intern. Today, today is my first day of working at Koika, and I'm very excited about the presentation. So one comment about the presentation is a lots and lots of acronyms that I don't really understand yet. A lot of um, acronyms, so yeah. And the other question to the presenter is, um, so when it comes to volunteerism, it's a very noble activity, but then there also has been an issue with people who are not qualified to carry out jobs in um, the host country. Like for example, a people who don't have adequate qualification to be a nurse or teacher, and who's inexperienced carrying out a role of volunteer, and how can this issue be Dealt. Can you repeat the last part of your question? Yeah, the last part of my question is that volunteerism is a very noble activity, but also there has been concern about people who are not qualified to carry out the job of a nurse, a teacher, or other activities, being a um, carrying out the job in a host country. So how can this problem be solved? How does the organization make sure their qualification is really adequate? 
Thank you very much. Okay, I think um, we don't have time to take on more, but if somebody has a burning one bef once the uh, panelists have answered the questions, then just wave with both hands, then I'll see you. Um, <laughs> I'm going to ask, um, I'll start this way and then uh, come this side. If we can keep your responses really, really brief, uh, because the buses have to leave on time. Thank you. Well, I, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Dr. Dictus. Uh, do you think a desired result is different from intended result? Yes. Uh huh. Desired result, we're happy to have those Okay. Okay. Well, um, according to my presentation, I mean, my understanding is that the volunteering is. Uh, um, networking, and the, which is related to the uh, other question, uh, networking based on um, dynam two, two components, which I didn't mention, uh, they are dynamic information and the flexible specialization. So uh, information in volunteering is not in the hands of volunteers' boss or volunteers' leaders, or project leaders. But instead, information is produced in their activities, in the process of their activities as volunteering. Such kind of information is very necessary for successful activities. But, I mean, I said successful maybe not successful from the viewpoint, point of view of uh, intended or result-based uh, result volunteering or management, but as a desired result, it is successful because volunteers work with people in the local communities and they try to bring a change, even if it's not intended result, they can bring a change and to make people happier. So in my view, it's enough for volunteering. But I, I think the es it's essence of volunteering. And the other aspect I didn't mention is flexible specialization. Flexible specialization means volunteering work or volunteering service is changing. Roles of volunteering is changing depending on the situations they face. So it is very difficult sometimes to achieve intended result because the situation is changing. But they have to bring some changes in community to make people happier. So my understanding is um, Volunteers can bring the desired result. I'm sorry, but uh, not, not intended result. And another question is uh, maybe about, addressed to me, to, about social capital. Well, I, I mentioned that the dynamic information and the flexible specialization, it's through this process, uh, volunteers can uh, uh, help formation of social capital. Even if their terms are two years or one year, I, I think they, they uh, build some social capital so that it can continue or it's uh, still effective in their community. Uh, my turn. So after the receiving, after some getting the questions, several questions with the dictators and uh, the, um, the floor, I think I need to just um, uh, explain more exactly about my presentations. I, I guess it's some uh, misunderstanding the, between myself and the participant. Um, volunteering is itself most important. And, and just uh, Richard is uh, asking about um, how to measure the global citizen. Yeah. Firstly, I will answer your questions. Uh, I mentioned in my presentation, this is studying. It's not finished, uh, it's not complete ideas, but I just we are studying now. We are just uh, try to just measuring 
activities, the product, not people, not citizen, not volunteers. So activities and product, the volunteers produced in the process of in the process of the, the act, some doing the some partnerships and also for the period. So we wanna measure the activities only, not people. When to, when we conduct the project, we measure people export because we pay money, pay, pay, pay money uh, to them for the some the, um, the purpose and the measure activities of the export and the measure the input, the some constructions and others products and uh, some materials. But in case of volunteerism, in case of volunteering, we do not different view. We have the different view. That is a, a major activities. Why? Some, uh, everybody knows that we have the MDGs the, uh, from 2000 to 2015. And I just said, uh, when you the, um, evaluate the MDGs, how, how much we just achieve the MDG, MDG goals. And volunteerism, even though volunteerism do a lot, did a lot, contribution, but I just uh, volunteerism do not just some, um, uh, well, just some, um, well, okay. Anyway, that's why. So I wanna, imp I wanna emphasize the contribution, objective contribution of volunteerism, that's why. And just uh, um, some flower, the, or, in, or intern asked me, uh, about some, why RBM is most important. So sorry, the RBM is not most important. Volunteer activities most important. Volunteers itself most, most important. And then the uh, object result, object outcome from the volunteer activity is important for the next 15 years after in the 2013. So we'd like to show the volunteer, volunteers contribution to the international society. This is my point. That's why we are studying and together with uh, UMB and other people. Um, I want someday, I want, I, I hope someday volunteerism so will be a, the officially, so strongly, so contribution may way to the achievement of SDGs. Yes, uh, international volunteers in a host country cannot stay forever. They have to leave sometime. Then national volunteers take over the roles and assignments of the international volunteers. So international volunteers have to work together with national volunteers uh, by teaching uh, the uh, skills of uh, recruiting of uh, volunteers and uh, program developments and also uh, uh, program evaluation and, and many other skills. Uh, we have, uh, in COICA, we have eight distinguished area with development areas, including agriculture, education, healthcare, IT, public administration, etc. I like to suggest the volunteering as the special area that has to be set up in host countries so we can spread the spirit of volunteer into the development strategies. That's my suggestion. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Um, I know that uh, they, you know, each one of the panelists could have spent a bit uh, more time in answering uh, the questions because there's a wealth of knowledge sitting um, uh, in each one of them. Um, I hope that um, somehow uh, we can continue the conversation whether it's online. Technology these days is something that allows us to actually uh, not stop conversations just because we're no longer physically in the same room. Um, there were uh, two questions I think that remain unanswered that I want to tackle and then I'll close and sum up. Um, the first one was um, what is, it was in terms of collective impact from, from the uh, far end there. Uh, what is UNV doing? I think in terms of collective impact, uh, one of the key things that UNV recognizes is that um, 
UNV cannot do it alone. That's number one. Uh, we do facilitate, we enable, and we open doors in terms of the UN framework. Uh, the plan of action that I spoke about earlier on is a space uh, that allows member states to work side by side with uh, NGOs, with uh, academia, with the private sector to look at how can we uh, collect um, information, how can we collect evidence so that we can not just um, understand what our collective impact is, but we are able to talk about it so that we can change the narrative and then we can influence policies. Um, so it comes full circle to the issue of the enabling environment. Um, the second uh, point was on not unqualified volunteers. And my sort of uh, generic response, because I could go into more detail, is, uh, and here I'm speaking more from the heart rather than from uh, the intellect, that um, when there is mutual respect, when there is mutual respect, uh, we should not find ourselves in a position where we are sending unqualified uh, volunteers to go and do critical roles that have got life and death um, implications. However, it so happens that sometimes volunteers are not adequately prepared, and so um, there's a lot of uh, best practices and good practices right across Asia, across uh, Europe, and across uh, quite a number of uh, African countries in terms of uh, training and um, working in partnership with uh, the, the host agency or the receiving uh, agency so that you can understand the needs very well, you do your needs assessment, and therefore you also do the selection of, of, of the volunteer appropriately to meet the needs of, of the people and then train them. Um, the last thing that, um, and I'm sorry I'm giving very brief answers, um, the last thing that I want to say is um, in summary, the importance of the conversation that we're having uh, this afternoon is a conversation that says that uh, ignorance or is very detrimental for the work that we do. That uh, in order for us to really shape uh, the right policy environment to create uh, the necessary structures at the local level, remembering that international volunteering is a fraction of volunteering worldwide, right? that if we truly believe that we want to be sustainable, that we need to build up a case for and show that volunteering makes a difference. And international volunteering is complementary rather than a replacement of national and local volunteering. I'll leave you with a, a, a very quick um, story. I wouldn't be an African if I didn't leave you with a, a story, right? Um, and some of you know this story. It has got two endings depending on which one you want to take. The story is a story of an eagle, a baby eagle, you know, one of those big birds, that was, um, it lost its way. Um, when it was still an egg, actually, uh, it was dropped. And a chicken picked it up. And the chicken sat on the egg until the egg hatched. And it was on a farm. And uh, the eagle grew up like a chicken. It thought it was a chicken. It walked around like a chicken. It flapped, it ate like a chicken. But all the other chickens were laughing at it because they were saying, you are ugly. Because it looked very different from all the other chickens. One day, an eagle came flying by and saw this eagle sitting among the chickens. It flew down and said, what are you doing here? Do you know that you can fly? And said, no, I'm just an ugly chicken. And said, no, you're not a chick an ugly chicken. You're an eagle. You've got the capacity to fly. Come, I'll teach you so that you can fly. So one ending of the story is that the eagle refused and the big eagle went away and the eagle died never knowing how to fly. The other ending is that the eagle learned how to fly and realized that they could reach the sky. And so after some time, with so much knowledge of what their potential was, what they can do, they put the knowledge into practice and they were able to fly. For us, we just need to be able to move the conversation of volunteerism from something that everybody can see sitting there to something that can fly and reach the sustainable development goals. 
because we can make a difference. The sustainable development goals will not be achieved without volunteers, international, national, or local. Thank you very much to the panelists. Please help me to give them a hand. Sorry for taking up the time. No problem at all. And it was a really, indeed, passionate discussion there. And I, I really admire Amanda's passion every time I meet her. She is a really great woman, and she really talked about the importance of international volunteering in, in the context of the sustainable development. Before we close today's forum, let us welcome Ms. Kaya Yanagisawa back to the stage for her closing remarks. And as Amanda emphasized, bus has to leave. So please be brief. Thank you very much. Please give her a big round of applause. So at the end of this intensive day, I want to make my closing remark very short. So throughout the day, one key word came up to my mind. It's mutuality. So I start with quoting the word of, some word of my, uh, one of my uh, volunteers. She said, after coming back to Japan, she said that in the beginning, she had great difficulty to find a space to work with her colleagues and how to contribute to the to this local community. But when she learned how to ask support from their colleagues, everything started to move forward. So it means the importance of mutuality. And actually, it was discussed about changes that should be brought by both sides, not just one side. Then the mutuality goes to the relationship between Koikan Japan and Koikan JICA. Despite the short period of time of just a one day forum, I learned a lot from Koika, and particularly it's a kind of flexible relationship with the private sector, and it was very impressive to, to learn about the experience of the Samsung Electronics and the Cinema Paradise, and, uh, and thus that we can learn from, uh, from each other, this kind of mutual learning should continue uh, uh, in the future. And finally, mutuality in sustainable development goals. As you know, MDGs is well, all about how to change developing countries. But SDGs cover all nations, all countries, developed and developing. And for instance, in my country, Japan, one out of six children are in poverty. And we are so shocked to see the miserable situation of the evacuation center after the East Japan earthquake happened. Actually, there were worse than refugee camps in, 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 Middle, in Middle East countries. So, in that case, solutions found in developing countries can be applied to our own nations and volunteers can make a bridge. So that's all about mutuality. And I want to make a comment about Amanda's story. Maybe the ending in Asia is somewhat different. Maybe the ego will remain in chickens because the chickens are parents and brothers, brothers, and we cannot leave our family so easy. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a very different story. But anyway, uh, before closing, I would like to thank all moderators, speakers, and the panelists for, the, for your great contribution and MCs and great audience uh, uh, who made this uh, forum really uh, vibrant. And I would like to thank all Koika staff who prepared this forum, so, such a success, successful one. So uh, let's uh, make a big applause to the old staff members. <laughs> So thank you very much, and I, I, want, I wish this kind of a forum will continue uh, in the future so, so that we can uh, make a good contribution to, the, to this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Kai Yanagisawa. So that was all we had to offer in the first Koika JICA Forum on International Volunteering. Once again, I want to thank all of you for making this forum meaningful and productive. And for that, I cannot thank you enough. 
Uh, today's forum may have come to an end, but I believe the spirit of volunteerism expressed throughout this forum will live on. We will surely keep this in our mind as we move forward. Thank you, and I hope you, ha hope you have a safe journey back home. For domestic guests, please be noted that there will be a bus waiting for you at International Cooperation Center, which will take you to Panjo Station at 440. For JICA's staffers who will be joining the JICA wrap-up session, our staff will show you the way to the venue. And for uh, international guests who are going back to the hotel, the bus is also waiting for you at the lobby of this building, which will leave which will leave at 4.40, so please be noted. Thank you once again for your participation and all your support, and hope, you hope to see you in the future again. Thank you very much.